Palimpsest. Noun. Something reused or altered, but still bearing traces of its original form. One billion years in the future, Earth still exists, though maybe not as we imagine it. Eras upon bygone eras worth of technology have been left behind by eight previous and fallen civilizations. It is now up to the denizens of the Ninth World to piece together what was left behind. Perhaps they're looking to carve out their place in the world, or simply to survive a land riddled with weird and unearthly dangers. Or perhaps still, they just wish to learn and uncover the secrets of the Numenera. Hello, and welcome back to Palimpsest, our Numenera actual play podcast. I'm Zan, and I'll be your GM for these adventures. I'm so glad you've joined us for our second episode. We are super excited to start having regular listeners, and I hope that you'll become one of them. We get a little more into the meat of the cipher system in this episode, actually rolling some dice and using some of its cool mechanics. While we stick pretty closely to the published rules and material, as always, there is room for adaptation and creative usage. So if you're familiar with this system, don't be surprised if some of the things that you're used to in the mechanics and lore are a little bit different. As another note, we did have a few points in this episode where we ran into some slight audio funkiness, but the episode is still perfectly listenable and enjoyable. This time around, our newcomers to Lagam continue to get ready for their mission from Eidos to stop the bounty hunters. There's some abilities gained, useful information learned, and a good plan put into the works. Join us as Nehemiah, Smallrind, and Jory continue to uncover the palimpsest that is the Ninth World. You make your way to the somehow very well-stocked bar. Is that literally what it's called? <laughs> Please tell me it is. No. Bridget, okay. what would what would Fahura's bar be called? Uh, she called this one the first tree. The first tree is what it's called. First tree. Okay. Which is yeah. so fitting. Yep. What was the last bar the called? The last tree. The last tree. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Good. We're going in a circle. There is a hand-painted sign outside the door that says the first tree. Excellent. You walk in, and Fahura is uh, sitting behind the bar with a glass case with some snail slug-ish looking creatures inside of it. And they Mm -hmm. are whistling or humming or they're making sounds that's clearly musical but not a song necessarily sure harmonious but not constructed correct she looks up as you walk in oh oh hello uh what can i what can i get for the three of you do you have any of that um like a sort of azure milk sort of thing here by chance <laughs> I really... How dare you? Mm, I don't know whether to really love you for that reference or to really hate you for trying to insert that into this world. I don't know. You can, you can do, but I said Azure. I, know, I didn't say anything else. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh-huh. No, no, no. Uh, Azure milk. Uh, I, I don't know. It looks like that. I forget what it's called. I don't know. It has a name. I'm sure I could make you something that at least looks like that, even if it doesn't taste the way you remember. You know what? That's fine. We'll take that. I'll, I'm just that sounds good. I don't have any money. I don't think. <laughs> don't worry. Do about... I have any money? <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys all start with at least a little bit of money. I'll say. Okay. Yeah, I think I got like five. I was say, you still, you still have five shings. Eight. Eight? Is okay. there? A... Oh, there it is. Mm. There it is. There it is. Um, you said just five. At five least. is like a base. Yeah. Everyone yeah. starts off with at least five. Some types and such focuses maybe start out with more, but I can't remember exactly. That's fine. Uh, don't. Don't worry about money this time around. I oh. have a feeling that you are looking for something or maybe about to do something. People don't usually come into large groups like this unless they're uh, like getting off of whatever job it is that they're doing for the day or if they're heading out to do something bigger. That one. The second one. That mm. one. Right. So let me make you each something and then you can head out on your way. How's that sound? That sounds great. Um. She makes Jory something that's 
uh, kind of sweet, but definitely like a like a cream based liqueur that is bright blue. I like it. That's good. Very good. And what can I get to the two of you? Do you normally offer spiritus liquors to people going out to do a day's work? People going out into the beyond? Fair enough. I'll have whatever the house brew is. Oh, you're going to like this one. And she brings out a peachy orange liquid in, in, a, in a tall bottle. This one is my own special brew. And she pours a, like a, a half a tumbler for you. Now I'm going to warn you, this will, this will give you something interesting and new to do, but it might change you a bit in the process. I make this from a fruit, from a tree that's a little bit north of here. If you eat the fruit outright, it uh, gives you a special ability for a little while. Unfortunately, in my distillation process, it changes the properties of that. It, there's a slight chance that you might have a mutation as well if you drink this. Sounds delightful. She takes it and sips. Awesome. <laughs> Good on you. I don't like to gamble when I drink. <laughs> I don't know what else you're supposed to do when you drink. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is just gambling with the drink. I see. Just straight up gambling, you know. Hey, Maya, what about you? Are you getting anything? You know what? Honestly, going out into this, I'm pretty sure just a water is going to suit me just perfect. You can do both, I guess. I'll, I'll save the drinking for once the job's done. Oh, good idea, like a treat. Well, that's smart. Why exactly. didn't I think of that? <laughs> like a treat. Clearly, you, I need my faculties about me more than you do. <laughs> oh. I don't, ha I don't have as many of them as you do. I need to keep every single one as close to the chest as possible. Thanks, I think. But, okay. We'll go with yes. Okay, yes. Yes, I like that. I like getting on with people, so this is good. So, Bridget, I'm going to have you first. We're going to roll for whatever ability it is that you have. And then we're going to roll to see if you get a mutation. So, let's start by rolling me a d20, please. Cool. 16. 16. Uh, go ahead and roll the d100. 93. 93. Interesting. Oh, dear. You now have the ability of a secret finder. A symbol kind of, like, appears on your temple. Just a, a little, like, square with a line through the top portion of it. You now tap into, ever so briefly, what is known as, at least in the books, known as the data sphere. It's essentially information. Like, if you imagine, like, Wi-Fi or internet or something like that, but, like, kind of in a very vague and almost living sense, um, you are able to tap into this you can name one place, creature, or object and immediately learn the distance from you to that thing and the direction you have to travel to get there. Ooh. Hmm. You are aware of what this is. Like, you just kind of have a, a vague understanding that you have this power now. Um, and then, go ahead and roll me another d100, then. Seven. Seven. On your elbows, a small protrusion comes out, almost like a like a little spike on both of your elbows, just kind of like pops out on the edges, it almost painfully kind of like protrudes out. Um, you could probably, it's not sharp enough to like puncture something, but definitely hard enough to like stab at something and, and do some significant blunt force damage. Is it like a bony protrusion or like horn kind of material? More like horn okay. than bone. So not sharpenable. Uh, you could sharpen it. Interesting. Good to know. <laughs> <laughs> so you each have a drink in front of you. Nehemiah, you have just a glass of water. Jory, you have a sweet blue cream liqueur. 
and yeah. and smaller and you have a sweet at the beginning savory on the back end wine almost uh that has now given you an ability for the next 24 hours as well as an interesting addition to your elbows so question the yes. ability lasts for 24 hours do we yes. do i know whether the elbow protrusions are going to last just that period or are they permanent they also only last that period okay I I want to just also put on the record that I put into my notes. I got elbow protrusions in exchange for being able to access the organic Wi-Fi with my mind. That's <laughs> exactly it. Excellent. So you all sit there sipping your drinks, and Fahura is tending to these creatures in this glass box as they hum along to their own distinct tune. So we hear you like a tree. Aye, that is what I said earlier. And you see things from this tree. I'm sorry. Um, we just talked to um Iona. We were wondering what you saw oh, when you saw the, the bounty uh... hunters. Yeah, that. Yeah. So I was climbing the tree, and I climbed as far as up as I was comfortable with, which was actually pretty high when I uh, consider looking back on it. Uh, but I saw out in the distance a a group of four or five individuals that uh, were headed that way. And I looked just a little bit closer. I was able to get a little bit closer once I got down. And one of them matched a description that Iona had given us when they arrived of one of the people that had been following them. So I went back, came back here, and I told them. And I told Hidos too. Okay, well, that's a good start, I think. How long ago was this again? Sorry. Oh, that was um two days ago now. Two days ago. Okay. So the day before you arrived. Right, right. Of course. So you saw them and then you returned here. So they could have already made it this far. Oh, that's a possibility, yeah. And we were the only strangers that have arrived recently. Correct. To my knowledge, anyway. I feel like uh, someone would have told us if somebody else had shown up at this point. My only question is, with so many gaps in the walls, would it be possible for someone to sneak in in the night, maybe? Do you keep guard? Oh, of course we do. There's plenty of people here. Everyone has a job going around here. There are plenty of people who are willing to stay up during the night and make sure that no one is coming in and sound the alarm if there's anyone suspicious. Who's in charge of these guards? Is there anyone in particular we could talk to? We're still kind of in the process of, like, making sure that... We're still assigning jobs... Adriel was the one who kind of headed things up at the beginning of things, and she still kind of makes sure that everything is going well with them, but they're kind of self-sufficient at this point. But if you want to talk to her about any reports that she's been getting, I'm sure she'd at least tell you a little bit of something, maybe. It might be wise before we go herring off into the beyond. Is there anything you'd recommend taking out there with us when we go, just to be safe? A good number of rations in case you don't make it back in a few days. Make sure you take your weapons, obviously. I mean, other than that, it's hard to say what you're going to face out there. Well, I guess they're going to find out. <laughs> Who's excited? I am. I'll have another drink, please. <laughs> <laughs> she mixes you another blue something. I like this blue something. Can it be called that, just blue something? Sure, I was just about to say I'm going to need a name for it. If you want to call it blue something, we can put it on the menu. I think that's good. It leaves it a mystery. Which is kind of how it feels to drink, so I like it. <laughs> so, uh, it's Adriel now. Best of luck finding her. She's... If you don't find her immediately, eventually wander around and she'll probably find you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's um, a little standoffish. That's a word for it. Wanted to be diplomatic. 
question about this secret finder symbol. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a cost to use it, or is it an enabler? That is a very good question. Um, because it is based on a cipher, it does not cost you anything. Typically, you would use it, and then the cipher would deplete. Okay. But because you have this ability for 24 hours... I can use it as much as I need to in 24 hours? Yeah, I will say that if you use it a ton, there might be some other kind of cost to it because of your constant connection to that data sphere. Okay. But there is no innate cost to using it at the startup. All right. Then I'm... <laughs> Small Ren just puts one finger up to the mark on her temple and says, Adriel. You immediately get kind of like, kind of like an almost like Matrixy esque like surrounded in blue light, hologrammy, vague image of this person and you know that she is at the northeastern edge of the settlement and small Ren just starts moving she's this way well i'm glad you know where she is have a good uh have a good day a good morning hope it starts out right for you and for her waves as mm. small Ren walks out the door thanks for the blue something as you walk out the door i'm just kind of walking like finger up waving like wait a second wait a second wait a second that thing you just did where you just found Adriel? Do you have to know the person to do it? As far as I can tell, I need to know the name. Can you find it? Avalon? Absolutely. But I don't want to find them oh. and then not know as much as I can about them. All right. Fair Research enough, fair first. Enough. Okay. That's what my mentor always said. My mentor said kick him in the teeth, so... <laughs> We come from different schools, clearly. Mine said, shut up and do what you're told. That's about it. Oh, that's no fun. I don't really have a mentor. That's, it's more of oh. like, you know what, I don't want to talk about it. Why did I start talking? I'm sorry. <laughs> Adriel. <laughs> uh, you find her. She is leaning against the wall on the inside of the settlement. Just kind of watching, people watching. She has a bundle of something next to her. She was probably carrying it somewhere, but she has stopped and is maybe resting or perhaps just waiting. Oh, you three. Hello. How can I help you? Well met, again, yes. We were told hmm. that, at least at one point, you were the one in charge of this settlement's defenses and nightly watch. Are you <laughs> still in charge? That depends on what you consider to be in charge. Do they report to you? Do you know what goes on? If I ask them, they tell me. If I don't, then they don't. This is a weird relationship. Let's put it this way. I'm not in charge of defense, necessarily. That's Rufus. They're the ones that make sure that we are well accommodated here. I just, when we first started out, made sure that nothing was going to take us unawares. That's more what I'm interested in. I'm not looking for safety, I'm looking for information. Anything that anyone might have seen involving strangers, particularly bounty hunters. To my knowledge, the only strangers that have come in the past couple of days have been you lot. Oh, good. Good. That's... What? Nothing. Absolutely okay. nothing. And she leans back and just kind of like has like a, a, a smirk. And she leans against the wall. I just think it will be easier for the census, if we ever do one, but, you know, it's just not a lot of people. Sure. Census. Yes. She takes yes. a sip from a flask that you're not sure where she pulled it from. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that out loud as well? What's wrong with me? This place is odd. I like it, though. Don't get me wrong. I like the big shade egg. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. What's it? What's it do? It makes noise. Huh. I can't hear anything. Yeah, it's deactivated at the moment. Uh, Edos is, is that good? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Edos and Rufus have been working on it. When we first came here, it made noise, but we couldn't hear it. But the animals 
could. Speaking of which, have you seen Sling? Sling. What's a sling? Sling is a frilled ball. Huh. What? <laughs> can't... Can't say I've seen a sling. No, her name is Sling. Would any of us actually know what that is? You know what? Let's do the first roll of this this campaign here. Woo! Didn't Bridget do rolls for... Oh, that's fair. The first check. The first skill-based There we go. You're correct. Let's... Do an intellect test level three. Because you all traveled in the beyond at least a little bit, so there's a possibility that you might have at least run into one of these. Fail. Success. Success. Jory, you have no idea what that collection of words means. I'm sure they all mean something individually, but together you're not. You have no idea. I don't know what a lot of collective of words are. <laughs> Smallrin, you have heard of a frilled ball before, or you read about one. Your mentor had a book about various flora and fauna, um, and you remember reading about a frilled ball before, but you've never seen one in person. Nehemiah, you actually ran into one on your way through the beyond down here. You were able to avoid it. It was stalking you for a time, but eventually lost interest when it realized that you probably were going to be able to hold your own against it. No, Sling is her name. She is a frilled ball. I've heard of them, but never seen one. So no, I don't know where she is. I understand all of those words separately. Mm. Regardless, I'm sure she's stalking around somewhere. Rufus made a good impression on her, healed her wounds when we first came out here, and she's kind of stuck around. She's not caged or anything. She's good to come and go as she pleases. Occasionally she just leaves for a couple of days, but always comes back, it seems. Anyways, the sound that was first here when we arrived kept a lot of different creatures away. It seemed that they couldn't handle the tone of it. Uh, eventually, Edos and Rufus were able to adjust this sound which seems to emanate from the sphere to some sort of like melodic something or other it was never a song but it was at least different tones and not hurting the ears of the creatures around here anyways right now they seem to have found a way to block it entirely and turn it off so maybe it'll make noise again at some point I don't know that's not my project hmm fair enough yeah. What was it you asked again? What did you need from me? We just wanted to know if anyone had seen anything unusual involving these bounty hunters. But if you hadn't heard anything, then... No. No, no one's come this way. That's fine. Say we were to wander out and um, have a conflict of sorts with a group of people. How are we in relation to... Legam, as far as like, are we representatives? Are we people that don't have any association with you because we're being violent or being confrontational or being way too pushovery? Like, like, what's our relationship? Look, we don't really have a governmental structure, so it's not like you're ambassadors or anything. Oh. Okay. Okay, just wanted to make sure we weren't, like, overstepping anything. Oh, you do we you. Okay. You do you, and you'll be just fine. She takes another Good. long sip from the flask that she has. I look at her out of the corners of my eyes. I'm kind of afraid of making eye contact. She spooks me. She maintains hard eye contact. Of course she does. <laughs> yes, she does. <laughs> uh. I don't like it. I think um I think I'm gonna go wander out into the vast wastelands now. Oh, better <laughs> idea. Where should we get some supplies? What's the best place for that? Maybe somebody said something about rations. A Rufus can probably provide you with whatever you need. They're typically the one that takes care of any sort of supplies here of generally. I see. Nothing like a good tour through the hierarchy. I think we'll stop by that one next. <laughs> They're cool, I think. I've only seen them from a distance, I don't know. They always have this little thing following them around. That would be bot-bot. I like the little thing. Right, okay. 
I'm gonna go that way. So, um, thanks. Um, best of luck. Okay. Sure, you'll need it. Shuffle, shuffle away. <laughs> She's ominous. Really, I rather liked her. I'm sure, I agree with you, but I'm already too far away. <laughs> I didn't say I disliked her. I just said she's ominous. Okay, so where do we find Rufus? Oh, can you do your mind thing? Yeah. I I could do the mind thing, but he's much easier to find. When I came, he was working on that section of the wall, and he seems to sort of make his way logically from one project to another. I will also point out, because I made the same mistake, Rufus has they, them pronouns. They seem to move logically from one project to another. I don't imagine they're hard to find. I mean, we could also just yell their name really loudly. Ask that. But you all decide to kind of just make your way counterclockwise around the area until you happen upon Rufus. And you do eventually find them um, in kind of a like a workshop area. It's kind of an open air pergola of sorts um, with tables and what, what are you laughing at? That is, okay, so I before this week I literally had never heard the word pergola <laughs> and I, the last time it came up, the only other time in my life that word has come up was when we recorded Another Path on Tuesday. That's hilarious. I huh. oddly enough, I know this is gonna sound weird, but I use the word a lot. <laughs> sure. It does sound a little weird. <laughs> it's me. I was gonna say that surprises me not at all. No, like you probably build a substantial amount of pergolas. I don't necessarily build pergolas, but I have wanted to build a pergola for years and have considered building one for our backyard. Yeah. Ooh. But your backyard is prime pergola know, territory, especially if you've got you know, a fantastic pool boy tending to things. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Shut up, pool boy. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> we have clearly named our campaign the wrong P word. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Pergola. Pergola. Rhapsody. Adventures in woodworking. God, there has got to be some sort of woodworking RPG. If not, we can do a one page of that. Absolutely. We could absolutely do a couple, make that over a couple of drinks at the basement some night. Yep. Back to game. So you find Rufus uh, working in their workshop. Again, it is an open air pergola with a kind of like stretched skin top that allows light to filter through, but from being directly in the, the beating sunlight all day. And... Uh, they are working at a table. There's a couple tables. Most of it has, like, various piles of things, partially finished projects, and bits of Numenera, and, and things that have been ripped out of other pieces of stuff, partially built things. They are working on... You're not quite sure what, but it definitely has a whole lot of wires. Um, and Bot-Bot is standing next to him, kind of standing and holding two wires together as they connect them. Knock, knock. Oh, um, hello? Uh, how... Hold on, just just, just a moment, please. Yeah. Uh, and they, they go back and connect the wires, and a little spark comes out. Yes, good, uh, thank you. What? Good, all right. And sends Bot-Bot on the way to put this back on, in another pile. Uh, yes, how... How can I help you? We were told that you were the one to see for supplies if we were going out into the beyond. Yes, I can typically help you with supplies. What were you looking for? A few days' rations. Uh, there are any extra weapons that could be used against marauders? Anything you have lying around? I have a, a handful of... Ciphers, they're not particularly useful to me at the moment. I can definitely hook you up with rations. There are a handful of weapons. I am not a weaponsmith primarily. I work more in structure than anything else, but I could probably find you something serviceable if you need to replace what you currently have. You all seem to be at least fairly well armed. True enough, but uh, I wouldn't say no to taking a look at those ciphers if you got something that's. Uh... 
That's sturdy looking. Agrees. Anything could help. Of course. Give me, give me just a moment. And they kind of shuffle through a couple different piles of things. This is not something that I particularly find uh, useful here, um, but I've been calling it a sparkle. Uh, it's uh, It causes 1d6 glowing lights to shoot from the end of this small device here, and they hold up kind of like a, like a cylindrical tube, probably about an inch and a half around. Um, about a, a foot long. It travels out uh, maybe 50 to 100 feet and then explodes in a flash of brilliant colors. It might blind someone if you shoot it near them, but it's not going to do a whole lot of damage. Not nothing. It's hard to defend against someone if you're blind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is a level 4 mm -hmm. cipher. I will point out that at the beginning of things, uh, you everyone has a cipher limit. Everyone has two, I believe, because I think yeah, there's yeah. only a couple mm -hmm. of types that have three. I think it's mm -hmm. rights and manos. If you want to, you can carry more because there's power in these things. Carrying more might cause them to malfunction and could cause you to mutate. It is a roll. The more ciphers you carry past your limit, the higher the modifier will be and the higher on the chart, the worse things will happen. So you are welcome to either carry past your limit or to give up something that you currently have if you want to take this. I'm actually super all about mine, so. Same, but I am still going to take it because I will, Nehemiah don't care. Okay, okay. Nehemiah wants to try. Cool. So let me double check on how often this check needs to be made. Once per day. So let's go ahead and you're going to roll a D100 plus 10 per cipher over your limit. So right now it'll be a D100 plus 10. Okay. 71 plus 10, 81. That's bad. For a little while, you feel a bit off. You pick mm -hmm. this up and you put it in your, uh, in your pack. You take it from Rufus's hand and you just start feeling a little bit woozy for a moment. Your, your vision kind of goes hazy. You almost have just a slight vertigo. This is going to last for mm -hmm. 28 hours, Bull. and you subtract one from all of your die rolls for 28 hours. Ooh, all right. I should also point out, I said 24 hours earlier for your ability. It should be 28, because in this world, a day is 28 hours. All right. Ooh. That's, that's fun. Fancy town. Yeah, a billion years has slowed the rotation of the Earth for by four hours. Huh. Quite literally. Neat. Ah, oh, man. For that ability now. So many more hours in the day. So you are you're just a little bit, you just got a slight vertigo for the day. So you pick that up and you feel just a little bit off, but it, it's not anything that you haven't dealt with before. As, as you guys are kind of looking over this, uh, I'm sorry that seems to be the only one I can find right now, but keep in mind that if you are, if you are injured in your adventures going out, I am capable of helping when you come back. I, I, I just don't want you to panic. It, it, it is hard enough out there to try and face the things that could be trying to hurt you, to have to worry about your, your well-being to a certain extent. So I, I hope that you know that we have ways of taking care of people here. And I, I do mean that in the best sense. Can I ask you something? I, I don't mean to come off offensive. I'm hard to offend. Fair enough. How do you know we're not all, like, murderers? Or something? You're awfully nice and everything, but, I mean, just curious. I'm looking a gift horse in the mouth, aren't I? Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, to be fair, we don't know if they're not a murderer. Oh, that's true. Oh, what have we done? Not the lesson I was going to have you take away from there, George Orr. Allow me to say this much. If Eidos has said that you can stay, then you're fine. Do they have an instinct, that sort of thing? That's a way to put it. I weirdly feel more at ease than I did, so thank you. So I actually have a character sentence for Eidos, and I will be very sure. interested to see if you guys eventually put it together. <laughs> 
is there anything else we need to do? Maybe get some rations and then head out because I'm ready. I'm ready for this craziness. I think we should discuss what it is exactly we're aiming for here. Very chatty, aren't you? You ever just throw yourself into like a pit and see how it is to get out? Not once. Study the pit and then I throw myself in knowing exactly how I'm going to get myself out. Okay. All I'm saying is we were given a broad range of options for how we can accomplish this. Are we looking to be murderers? Or would we rather be intimidating? Would we rather capture these bounty hunters and bring them back? Do we want to try to bribe them? Do we have anything with which to bribe them? I don't know. I don't like the idea of bribing them because that means giving them more power in some way and that just seems not in our best interest. But mm. I don't know. I can certainly understand that. I mean, I think we should try talking first. Seems a shame to kill folk sure. if we don't have to. I mean, I'm all about I'm all about the teeth kicking, but I, you know, I'd rather save that for if we have to. What will we say that will dissuade bounty hunters that's not here's a lot of money? Hmm. I don't know. They're not here. We lie. Send them off in the wrong direction, you mean? Say, hey, they went off that way. Mm -hmm. That could work. Or, they're all dead. I found them. Uh, just bones everywhere. People like proof of things like that. We could say we did it. Roll around in the dirt a bit, and then and then look all out of breath, like, huh, we just killed all those yeah, people, but then, so you're good. Then they might try and take us back, and that's no uh, good. You're right. Yes. But if we send them off in the wrong direction, we say, yep, we, uh, uh, after, ooh, ooh, what about this? What about this? We were also hired. Just out from Charmaine. We caught up with them. They're heading that way. We don't want to fight 20 people. They neglected to tell us how many people there were. We're going home, or at least somewhere safe. That actually might work. Play the coward. They'll feel superior, and hopefully won't ask too many questions. They'll be rushing to show they can do better than we can. And off in the wrong direction. Right? If we're very, very lucky, yes. And then if nothing else, we can fortify here. Make sure that, uh, that our ominous friend knows to beef up some security where it needs to be, and we'll go from there. All right, then. You've got a really good brain, Myonia. I like it. Very proud. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I know bounty hunters. I lived around a, a bunch of them in my time. I wouldn't know anything about something like that, so... You are not good at lying. Um, but it's all right, Dory. You can tell us in your own time. Hey, Zan. Yes? So I have my special ability, I have a flex skill that I can, yes. it's supposed to be at the beginning of each day, but I haven't set one for today yet. It's still morning. All right, cool. Choose one task other than attack or defense on which you will concentrate for the rest of that day you're trained in that task. You can't use this ability with the skill you're already trained in to become specialized. I know I've already got espionage, but can I do my flex skill as lying? Deception, yeah. Make it so, number one. As you're walking away, Rufus goes, um, excuse me, you, you forgot the rations. Food! Yes! Oh, thank you, thank you. They hold out three small, maybe like four by four little packets. These will, if you open them up, there's a couple little uh, dehydrated uh, cubes in them. Each cube, if you put it in one pint of water, it will hydrate itself into a fairly disgusting but very filling sludge. Oh, you mean like this? And I pull out from my uh, from my pack the box that produces <laughs> um, the, the gelatin cube. that is my oddity, which is a it it is a box that produces a three inch cube of firm but gelatinous substance at the same time each day. And as editorializing by Zan, it is decently filling enough to be a snack, but it tastes like wet cardboard. 
they kind of like inspect it. What is that? Does that make? F- oh, you don't want to eat it. But well, you I can. will say that. While the sludge that these create is disgusting looking, it probably tastes better than whatever that thing creates. Though probably just as filling. But they're different flavors. One's red, one's blue, so... Those are colors, not flavors. Mm-hmm. I, I, but those things are often... They go together. They're like brothers. I'm the, uh... <laughs> Rufus, Rufus gives you a very, like, strange look like... Those? That doesn't make sense. I don't know what you're talking about. Blue is my favorite flavor. Uh, See? I think that there is a very strong possibility that we experience flavor differently. I would be very interested to talk to you about this when you return. You should try the bar. They have something called a blue something. Tell me if you like it. Did Fahura come up with a new drink? No. Oh. Yes, what? maybe. Kind of. It was a joint <gasps> effort. Brothers again, right? <laughs> Do you have any siblings? talking to me i'm just curious you keep using that word i don't think it means what you think it means (laughs) (laughs) it's a versatile word plot plot twist jordy has no siblings and doesn't know what those words actually mean (laughs) there's somebody here named rufus and that's just not gonna happen so stop trying to make it happen no nobody okay Okay, well, I'm going to go back to work. I wish you the best of luck, and let me know when you return. I'd be very interested to hear what you've discovered. Oh, if you see, mm-hmm. if you see any uh, Numenera or, or ciphers on your your trip out there, please feel free to bring them back. I'd be very interested to perhaps make something out of them. Will do. They go back to working with BotBot on the cipher with wires. Bye, bye, BotBot. You hear a little whirring noise as their arm, its arm goes up and down, mm-hmm. kind of waving. Yeah, good. Well, we've got plan, we've got rations, we've got some time together and feel like we've bonded a bit. So, um, anything else we need? I'm all set. I believe I'm ready to go. Thank you once again for listening to the beginnings of our story. I hope you continue to enjoy it as much as we do. As always, please feel free to follow us on social media. You can find the podcast on Twitter and Facebook at PalimpsestCast, as well as the rest of us on Twitter. Myself at Covered and Sawdust, Chase at TQ Loudly, Rin at Rin underscore Moran, and Bridget at Really Bridget. If you like what we're creating, please take the time to tell a friend about us, subscribe to the podcast, and rate and review us on your favorite podcatcher. As a brand new podcast, every little bit helps get our name out there. If you're interested in other theatrically presented podcasts, please check out Ghostlight Media's website at ghostlightmedia.net. There you will find links to all the other podcasts in that collective. It's a phenomenal group of content creators, including a few of the voices you'll recognize from this podcast, and I really hope you'll go check it out. It's all thanks to the people there and the kindness of their patrons that we have been able to make Palimpsest happen. Thank you once again for listening, and I hope you'll come back in two weeks to hear the next episode of Palimpsest. Until then, may your ciphers never malfunction. Palimpsest is produced by Zan Campbell-Johannes and Chase Greenley, and is edited by Pat Mahood. Original show theme music by Justin Longacre. This is a Ghostlight Media production.